Hello everyone, Ice Cool Tech here. So 2016 iPhone SE on iOS 14.5 Beta 4, let's take a look. If you want short but detailed iOS 4 reviews that cover the devices you care about, make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you always know if it's safe to update or not. Just like iPhone 7 and iPhone 11, general performance has remained pretty much the same since updating to Beta 4 of iOS 14.5 when compared to Beta 3. We do still see slight improvement when compared to that of iOS 14.4, but it's nothing major. Now the good news is that overall, animations have gotten slightly better with this release. iOS 14.5 Beta 4 has no system or app library stuttering for me. Now the bad news is that, of course, the widgets page still has no self-control and stutters whenever it feels like it. Now RAM management has been as good as it actually can be, considering this iPhone's hardware. Anyway, app reloads are more frequent as long as you have several apps, no matter how heavy they are, open simultaneously. This remains largely unchanged when compared to iOS 14.5 Beta 3 or iOS 14.4. Before I get into battery life, keep in mind that my iPhone SE has a maximum capacity of 87% and has had a restart, or two, or maybe three. However, I have disabled throttling in settings, meaning that the iPhone is not being performance throttled. Now, while battery life is still pretty bad when just using the iPhone in any way, it's still way better than that of iOS 14.2 or iOS 14.3, but when compared to iOS 14.4 or iOS 14.5 Beta 3, it's a bit worse than both. Now, standby time has improved slightly with a drain of about 4-6% per night, down from 7% with Beta 3. Now, keep in, keep in mind that your battery performance can and will most likely vary from mine. Now, as for overheating, it's the exact same thing as before, which was also the exact same thing as before. I haven't really noticed anything dramatic. So far, we're just looking at slight overheating when performing very light tasks. Naturally, that overheating does get more severe as the task gets progressively heavier. While we do get mixed results with iOS 14.5 Beta 4 on the iPhone SE, such as worse battery life, improved animations and standby battery, and everything else is just the same, we still come back to the main question of should you update. If you're on an early release of iOS 14 and you are okay with installing beta firmware, I'd say go for it unless you really have a need for the best battery life possible. Now, if you're on iOS 13, don't need to update and do not experience battery drain or overheating, you're very lucky and I'd recommend just staying there. If you're on iOS 12 and earlier, I'd recommend staying there unless you absolutely need to update. Alright everyone, that is all I have for this video. Now if you do have any questions or you'd just like to say hi, make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter using the link in the description. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.